Welcome everyone, this is going to be my first video in automating my CCIE lab environment. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is install Netbox in a Docker container uh, to serve as a source of truth for our environment. Um, basically the goal here is with Netbox is to in configure all my devices and then use it as a dynamic inventory uh, for like Ansible or Nornir or any other tools. Um, my CCIE lab environment obviously isn't humongous. It's not as big as a production environment, but you know, we're going to try to learn the concepts in a small scale. That way we can apply them uh, on a much larger scale. So the first thing I do is go to my Ubuntu VM uh, and I just have a couple things installed. I have Git installed, I have Docker installed, and I have Docker Compose installed. Uh, these are really the only prerequisites that we're going to need um, to install this. So the first thing I'm going to do is git clone um, github.com slash netbox dash community slash netbox dash docker dot git okay and you can see we cloned it into netbox docker so let's go ahead into that folder take a look what's in there you know some yaml files some scripts uh we have our docker file all right, so what Netbox actually recommends we do is that we create a docker compose.override.yaml file. And what this is going to do is we're going to configure which port we want Netbox to actually install on. Uh, this is because when you install Netbox, it'll just pick a, a random port by default. So let's go ahead and version 3.4 we're going to do services ports and okay perfect so let's get out of here we'll just cat that file um just so you could see okay perfect now after that honestly all we really need to do is use docker compose and we're good and let's docker compose up to spin up the environment. Um, this may take a couple minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. Uh, once this is completed, I will unpause. All right, and we're back here. Um, it took about somewhere in between two to five minutes. Um, but I'm going to launch my web browser and what we can now do is go to zero port 8000 and here we go so within five minutes we spun up our netbox docker container um, so let's go ahead and log in the default password is just admin and admin let's not save that and you could see our netbox environment um, so what I'll do is we'll configure one of my routers. So I'll sh kind of show you the workflow um, that I normally go through. Uh, what I first, well, you could really do a lot here. Um, I'm going to configure a platform. And see there's a lot of stuff you don't need to configure so for example I can configure a manufacturer a device type device roles all kinds of stuff but what I'm just gonna do is configure a platform here and I'm just gonna call it iOS 
very simple. Create. And then in my devices, um, it look you know, this will actually tell you what you need to configure. So we do need to configure a site. We do need to configure a device type. And we do need to configure a device role. So let's go ahead and start with a site. We're going to add a site. And I'm going to call it CCIE Lab. Pretty simple. Uh, we don't really need to fill, fill out any of this other stuff. Create. So now we have a site. Let's configure a device type, which it looks like it requires a manufacturer. So you'll notice a lot of stuff with NetBox, when, especially when you're first setting it up, is you go to configure something and then you realize that you know there's some kind of dependency. So for example, now we can go in here, we could say it's a Cisco. My routers are CSR 1000 Vs. Um, don't really care about the part number. Uh, it looks like you need the height configured. Um, but again, it is a virtual router. I'm not that worried about it. Let's create. So now I have my device type. I had my platform configured. Now we need to configure a device role. So I'm going to just call them router. Seems good enough. Um, what color should I configure my routers? Oh, whatever. Dark red. Why not? Okay. So now I could actually go into the devices and configure a device. My first one is going to be called R1. It is a router. It's a Cisco CSR1000V. Don't particularly care about the serial number, but it is nice, you know, in a production environment um, when you're trying to keep track of inventory. And the site is going to be the CCIE Lab. The other thing, it the platform isn't required. You'll see it's not bold, but I do actually want to configure it. Um, this is because down the line when we're automating, it's going to be a lot better to know what specific platform each device is running. Um, and I'm doing iOS because I know for a fact that Ansible and Nornir use iOS as a device type. Again, that's not necessary, it's just something that I'm doing. So we have our device R1. You can see it's located in the CCI lab. Um, we don't really have much, but the one thing I am going to want to do is configure a primary IP address. Now, this can be something that you can kick yourself with trying to figure out what to do. What you actually have to do is configure an interface. And on all of my CSRs, I have... It's going to be... Gig4 is my management interface. Um, it actually is a virtual, so I'll leave it. If you want to, you can actually configure the, the types of connections and then create you know, connections between your devices. Not something that we need to do in this lab, especially because the lab environment will be so dynamic that I don't really want to be configuring connections in NetBox back and forth. So here's what you do. Now that you have the Gig4 interface, you go over here to the plus sign to add the IP address. And this one is actually 10.2.2.101 slash 24. And that is it. You can give it a description, like I can call it management. Um, it doesn't really matter. But I will make it the primary IP address for the device. This is because if I wanted to, I could go in here and create a ton of more interfaces, um, give them all IP addresses, but the primary the primary IPv4 will show up here. And if I go into my devices, I can see I have R1 and here's the IP address. So I'm gonna pause the video one more time 
and I'm going to go in here and configure the rest of my routers and switches and when I resume the video I'll have them all in here so we can just take a quick look at the end state alright so we're back so I wanted to show you um, in the sites for CCI lab in NetBox we can actually see that I have 14 devices and if we click on the devices we can see here are all my routers R1 through 10 with their IP addresses and switch 1 through 4 with their IP addresses um, so this is pretty cool because if you go to let's say let's go to platforms um, as of right now I only have iOS but if you had like Junos or Arista you can click in and then see oh here are all my iOS devices. Um, we could separate them by site, we could set the, separate them by device roles. So I have 10 routers and four switches. If you know, I just wanted to see my four switches, I can go in there. Um, you know, we could also go based on device type. So if I wanted to take a look at my 3560s, I could just Oh, well, that's actually clicking on 3560, sorry. If we look at the two 3560s I have, we can see that switch one and switch two. Um, so if you've never done automation before, you might not see why this is so great. But when you're doing automation, being able to group devices like this is going to be extremely powerful. And the fact that NetBox does it by default is fantastic. Uh, the other thing to note about NetBox that I just wanted to show you is that it does have a pretty powerful API. Um, so what I did here is just click into the API. Uh, it may not load my VM. Ah, there we go. Okay. So we can get API stuff based on circuits, based on DCIM. Uh, but what for us we're really going to be looking at is we can get device roles, device types, you know. So, for example, if we wanted to grab all the routers, we can plug in a different query. And, and this is something that you don't really need to pay attention to right now, and I probably didn't even need to bring into this video. But basically, you can query this into... Um, you know, all kinds of stuff for API calls, or what I'll be doing very soon is configuring it for Ansible. Um, so this was just a very quick video to show you how to set up um, NetBox in a Docker container, configure some devices. Um, in the next video, I will be going ahead and actually using this to help automate the network.